But speaking of quasi-race conversation, let's talk about voter suppression in Georgia. So there was recently a a new bill signed by Georgia Governor uh, Brian Kemp. Oh, man, Brian Kemp and voting. Isn't that funny? Uh, he uh, uh, Changing some of the voting uh, laws in Georgia. And I'm going to go through a list of some of the highlights. I'm going to just provide a little bit of feedback on it because it is making it difficult for some people to vote. Yes, but there are there are some positives to it. I just want to put that out there, but I'm going to talk about it um, fully here. Let me pull it up. Give a damn about no damn. Oh, let me see. Here we go. It's sad that the the vote is the. I mean, this actual thing is split along, along party lines. It's like Democrats, you're suppressing the vote. Republicans are right. Like, no, we're getting the right people voting. Like, look, man. Let's make voting easier. Overall, let's make voting easier. Voting shouldn't be that damn hard. Hell, like let's let's everyone should be able to do it. Everybody should be able to participate in the government because guess what? We all got to pay taxes. No taxation without representation. It's crazy that a country was built on hey, you can't tax me and not pay me. Excuse me, you can't tax me and not let me talk. But then you got people who are now saying. Well, we still want your tax money, but you're a felon. Mm-mm. Well, you didn't get your vote in in time. Uh, 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 you, no, we, you, you did that wrong. Well, no, nah, we don't want you to vote. Are we going to make it? Well, no, nah, hell, you want my tax money? You should get my vote. Anyways, here we go. Increase state power over counties. The new law removes the Georgia Secretary of State as the chair of state elections and instead, the law lets the state legislature appoint a nonpartisan chair of the board. Here's the problem. In the previous election, our former president called the Georgia Secretary of State and wanted him to make some changes. And he was like, no, I'm not doing that. The election was, was fair. And, and we're, not, we're not doing that. And the Georgia Assembly gets pissed because, you know, Georgia's been a red state. And now we have two Democrat senators. And, you know, they're saying that um, Stacey Abrams is making up votes and all of this stuff, getting people registered to vote who who were dead, this, that, and the third. But the state itself is still red. Now, the heart of Atlanta is blue, and there are some blue pockets. But when you start thinking about the state assembly, you only have so much representation from the blue, and you're going to have more red representation. Excuse me. So now the red side gets to pick who gets to oversee the, uh, the, the, the process. And under the law, if a majority of the five-member board decides that a county's election officials have been doing their job poorly, the board can suspend those officials in a and replace them with one person the board has handpicked to serve as a super, as a temporary superintendent with the same powers the officials had. So what it sounds like, I'm not saying this is what it is, what it sounds like is if we don't get our way, we're going to appoint somebody to make sure we get our way. If that's not a direct attack on democracy, I don't know what is. What else we got? The new law allows state board to sideline election officials in up in up to four counties at a time. A majority of the board would have to decide that the officials demonstrated nonfeasance, malfeasance, or gross negligence in at least two elections over a two-year period, or that the county officials committed the crime at least three or at least three violations of election law. Board Regulations that last two general election cycles that not whatever. The so this is a concern to officials and and activists in large Democratic run counties like Fulton because President Trump pretty much attacked what they were doing because that's what swayed the election. And let me just cite this: I'm reading an article. Um, I'm using an article from CNN. 
uh, written by Daniel Dale and Diane Gallagher. I just want to make sure I'm giving them credit uh, for this one. Now, let's see. Let's get to the next one. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Sorry, guys. It's crazy. Oh, last thing. It's crazy how we talk about small government, especially on the red side, but they are making the government bigger for them. Guaranteed, but also limited drop boxes. The new law requires each Georgia county to have a minimum of one box for absentee ballots. So now, hey, everybody got to have a drop box. Great. Because this past election was the first time we used them in Georgia because of the pandemic. But the law limits how many drop boxes each county can have and how many hours and days the boxes can be open and where they can be located. The law says that each county can't have more than one drop box per early voting site or per 100,000 active registered voters, whichever number is smaller. This provision will dramatically reduce the number of drop boxes available in some large counties. Fulton, for example, will go from 38 that it had to eight in the future. And this is problematic. Why the hell are we living in drop boxes? Who cares? about drop boxes. So now you're going to make me, if I'm in a large county, drive further to drop my vote off. The f what are we doing here? I, I, it does not make sense to me. I don't understand it because what? Because if, if the votes are invalid in the drop boxes, they're going to get thrown out during the count, right? So if the counters are doing their jobs, it doesn't matter how many drop boxes we have. Do, do, do we have something saying, oh, well, it costs this much money to go collect the votes from the... Man, look, if you're going from 38 to 8, that is a problem because now we're making it harder for people to vote. And, and it takes me back to the found, some of the foundations, you know? The difference between the Senate and the House of Representatives. This little man in the, says, we need the Senate. Everyone have equal representation. Where the big man says, bro, I got all these people. I should have more voices in the room because I have more pressing needs. I, I, I deserve to be louder than them. Same, same, boss. Same thing we're doing here. We're trying to favor the little man. And that helped the big man. Because the, the, the smaller counties aren't affected by this. But the big counties, like Fulton, are being hurt. Not cool. Not cool. Let's see what else we got. Another early voting day in primaries and general election. So they are adding another early voting day, which I think is great. So, again, I told you there are some positives that come out of this. And, and let me see, under the week, under the weekend provision, um, so under the, the former law, uh, only one Saturday during the primaries and general elections from nine to four, under the new law, two Saturdays of early voting are mandatory from nine to 5 p.m. at a minimum or from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And two Sundays are optional. So we are opening up early voting on the weekends Expect uh, for those people who work the Monday through Friday, nine to fives. You can go on the weekend and get your vote cast. Because the old law said during normal business hours, normal business hours are different in, 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 by everybody. Some would say seven to three, nine to five. I would say seven to seven, but not saying that everyone works that that full that full slate, but it gives people who maybe work, who um, who start their days earlier, the option to vote at the end of the day and those who start their days later to, you know, go before they get off or before they go in or even after they get off. Let's see what we got here. Short runoffs. The law significantly shrinks both the overall length of runoff campaigns and the early voting period for runoffs. I don't have an issue with this because I'll tell you what. Um, Hey, guys, I'm sorry. I have to stop this because I have to go uh, get the dog. All right, I'm back. 
Oh, man, I had to take a little commercial break there. But we're back, and what were we talking about? We were talking about the voting law in Georgia. And let's see. Here we go. So, yeah, the runoffs are short. Okay, here's the big thing. Big changes are coming to absentee voting. A lot of changes are coming here. We have under the new law, absentee ballot, ballots are allowed to be sent out let me see, 29 days before an election, not 49 days previously. And, and what else? We have voters are allowed to request an absentee ballot at a maximum of 78 days instead of 180 days. And the applications have to be received by election officials no later than 11 days before the election, a reduction from the previous previous effective deadline of four days before the election. That's wild. Why do the absentee ballots have to be in earlier? Do you really need more time to count? Do you really need more time to count? I don't think we had a counting problem, but now they got to be in earlier. Why? Because a lot of ballots came in towards the end, maybe, and that had people thinking the election was going in one direction and it went in another direction. So now we're going to just inconvenience people. How come I can't request it earlier? Like we know who's going to be, we know who's going to be on the ballot. For the most part, we know who we're going to vote for. The longer I got it, the more time I have to look at it, play with it, become informed, work it into my schedule because people are busy and everyone's not regularly informed. And some of us like to know what we're voting on and what we're voting about. And we go and do that. So if we're going to, if we're going to do that, like for, I just don't get it. Like, why are you trying to make it harder to vote? And here's another thing that, now you can you can no longer they can no longer s just send out a uh, uh, absentee request. They have to you you have to request it now. So used to could they used to would send it out for you to apply for your for your absentee ballot. No longer. Again, why? Is there a group of people that are now voting that you don't want to vote? Because that's how I take it. And I think everyone should have the right to vote. And I think we should make it easy for people to vote. We should make it easier for people to vote. I mean, hell, we do everything electronically now except for vote. We still use this outdated. Let me let me either fill it, write something down, or use this computer system. And again, it's all this manual stuff. And it shouldn't be that way. I should be able to vote securely from my phone and call it a day. Because we make way more uh, important decisions from our phones on a daily. Also, a food and drink restriction. And I would, I could get down with, was it? It's a misdemeanor for a person to give or offer any money or gifts, including food or drink, to a voter within a polling place within 150 feet of the building, of the polling place, or within 25 feet of any voter standing in line at any polling place. Now, we know Georgia had those historically long lines, right? So you mean to tell me if I'm in line for five hours, somebody can't bring me no food or water, they can't offer that to me, and that's now a crime? It would be one thing if one side, somebody who had a, who had a tie to a candidate is providing food and drink because maybe that sways people. Like, oh, you know what? He did give me that water while I was in line. So I'm going to vote for him. I'm going to vote for him. No. What if the polling place just provides food and drink because they know they got a long line, they ain't got enough machines, they ain't got enough workers, and they got too many people at their precinct, and they're just trying to get people in and out and keep them as comfortable as possible. Also, we don't want to deter people from voting. We don't want to push them to leave, right? Don't want to push them to leave. But if we do, Oh, if we if we if we don't give them food and drink and water, they, then they might leave. And guess what? The places where the lines are the longest are usually in the communities that go against 
the red thing. They're they're they're, they're, blue, they're typically blue communities. And don't get me started on the race on the on the race side of it. Here's some more things. Um, there can be hotlines for voters to report voter intimidation and illegal election activities. I mean, I, I'm not a hotline guy because you can just call hotlines and make up anything. Who gives a damn? Um, counties can't use mobile voting facilities. So like Fulton County had buses in 2020. Not a thing anymore. Uh, that any Georgia voter can challenge an unlimited number of other individuals' qualifications to vote. What? So now people can just walk up to you and say, you know what? You're not qualified to vote. Now, does, will that stop someone from voting? No, but will it just create another process that takes up time and it's annoying? Yeah. So again, making it harder to vote. And there's a lot more in the article. If you're if you're if you're interested in it, you should just look it up, and and you'll get a nice little walkthrough of uh, just the voting process, and the changes in Georgia, and how messed up they are, and how they appear to be directed at one side of the fence. And I don't really understand it because I thought politicians are are supposed to represent the people, not their people, but people. You know, one of my favorite sportscasters, Colin Cowherd, always says, I'm not here to be right. I'm here to get it right. And I thought that's what politicians were supposed to do. They were not here to represent their people. They're supposed to represent all of the people and look out for the best interests of the people. And if you are trying to silence some people who you may not align with, you are no longer representing the people, you are representing your people, or, or more importantly, you're representing yourself. And that's selfish. And maybe you should just work in private industry because, yeah, in private, yeah, do whatever you whatever you can for yourself. But in public service, you should be looking out for the greater good. And there is no, there is absolutely no explanation for why you would want less people to vote if you're truly looking out for their greater good, but you're not you're looking out for the good of yourself. And we know it's obvious in Georgia, you really need to do better. You need to do better. And I'm not going to get into the corporate side of this. People calling out Coca-Cola and Delta like, bro, if y'all are expecting corporations to care about you, you're absolutely crazy. I mean, 